Yo, welcome back. Thank you all that have subscribed recently. I've had an absolute massive surge, about 6,000 subs, so nearly 40,000. Probably by the time this comes out, it will be 40,000. And uh, no, I appreciate it all. Thank you very much. But if you haven't already, please do subscribe and like and comment and all that sort of stuff. Right, back into it. So what I've done, I've brought a welder. So I've taken a leaf out of John Ward's book. John Ward has given me a bit of inspiration to duplicate some of his videos, but equally try some other stuff. So I want to put some stuff forward for Reg. So here's some of the videos that are going to be coming up. So today I have brought a welder. With the welder it goes from 10 amps to 160. I'm going to be pumping as much amperage as I can through different connectors. So this video will be the different types of connectors. So we've got a Wago 221 which is rated to 20 amp. We've got a Unicrimp through crimp which is rated to 20 amp. We've got an Ideal uh, splice line which is rated to 32. And our one and only connector block which is rated to 30 amp. So with that, with the rig that I've got set up, uh, we're going to try out with a bit of 2.5mm cable, solid core. Uh, we're going to slowly increase the amperage as it goes up and up. It will eventually heat the cable up and the cable will melt. From that, the different connectors one by one will melt. I just want to see how long they last, equally how they last, and uh, you know, put it into practical with you guys. I've got the thermal imaging camera, we see how hot stuff gets. A quick and couple of camera angles set up and uh, yeah, I'll take you over to the rig so you can have a bit of a look. Right, so what we've got, what have we applied? Made some stuff earlier. Nice, nice. So 2.5 mil solid core. We've got a splice line. We've got a way you go. We've got a connector block, and we've got a through crimp. So with, this is the welder that I brought. This will allow me to go from 10 amp, 10 amp all the way to 160 amp, which is quite nice. Uh, we've got some lights set up. We've got different cameras set up, angled around, and also. What I did buy of Amazon was a extraction kit. So it's a big uh, pipe that sits on the top, which I put from the ceiling with an extractor to take all the fumes outside. But thanks, Jeff, because it hasn't turned up yet. So today I'm just going to use my old style fan. So with all this running, obviously I'm going to open the door behind me because you don't want to be breathing anything in that's going to be burning from this. I've got a mask, so I've got the stuff that I need to protect myself and my lungs. Put that outside, and we're going to see how it goes, really. So I'm going to get the thermal imaging camera out. I'll set the stuff up and we'll start low because this cable rated is 2.5 mil. So to you guys that aren't sparked or the guys are learning, if you look on your on-site guide or your eggs books, there's a chart that will tell you how much rating each type of cable will go up to with the different ways and methods they are run. So in conduit or clip direct on a wall or through 100 mil of a loft insulation, all that sort of stuff. So the rating for this cable with a 2.5 mil solid core clip direct should be, should be, I had to edit that bit because I got it wrong, 34 amps. So what we'll do, we'll stick, start off 10, then we'll go to 20, and then we'll go to 30. We'll check in with the thermal imaging camera, see how hot stuff's getting, and then we'll crank it up high. So we're exiting the camera now, which isn't a lot to be honest. Uh, the board itself is 9.5 degrees. Top right, which is the actual earth clamp on the uh, welder itself, is coming out at 10 degrees. So this is how normally cold it is in this unit. Once we turn it on, I'll jump back and forth between the shots and we'll see how hot the stuff's getting. Right, so what I'm going to be doing, because the extraction unit's not full, I'm going to put the big fan up here. I've opened the door, I've opened the back door, I'm going to stick a mask on, protect myself. And uh, yeah, let's get to it. Let's start with 10 amps. And here we go. So we're not going to see anything for quite a while at such a low amperage. The cable's rated to, like we said, 34 amps. Rated to 20, sorry, 30, 20, 20, 32. So you see on the thermal imaging camera, the cable is already registering hotter than before, because you can now see it. That is now coming out at 13 degrees. Right, so what, what the whole reason for these type of videos is there's a lot of stuff coming up, as you can see. Is Obviously what you can see right now on this board is what you can't see in someone's wall. So what happens if your MTB, someone's took a nail in something that they shouldn't have done, as in fuse-wise, your cable gets overloaded and also the connectors of what actually visually happens in your walls, in your lofts, in your ceilings that you can't see, that you can now see. So you can explain to people or the young learners of this is how dangerous it can be if you haven't got the right protective stuff in place. 
Okay, so I'm going to whack this up now to 20 amps. Oops, sensitive. That's on 20 now. So realistically, for the rating that it's meant to be at, the Wago and the Crimp are at their max what it's rated to. I know it's going to last a lot longer. I've seen John Moore's video. I'm just thoroughly impressed with all the products, but to see in person and to test it like this with a thermal imaging camera should give you guys a little bit more data. So now at 20 amps, you can clearly see the connector block here. No, let's start from the first one. So from the first, so for the 20 amp, you can clearly see on there that the splice line is, rate, is heating up to around about 28 degrees. We'll go across to the Wago. That's at 30. The connector block. 15, 16, and the through crimp at 33. It's been about four or five minutes with them. They're exactly, I've just checked on the imaging camera, they are all exactly the same temperature still. So we're going to crank it up to 30. I'll leave it a couple of minutes and we'll report back. So it's in at 30 amp, which I just found really interesting is the cable itself is 45. 49 degrees for the splice line. 53 degrees for the Wago. The connector block itself is still sitting at, if this is correct, topping out at 30, and then the crimp itself is 53. So what we should see now when I change it to 50, the cable rating being exceeded because realistically, Clip direct, it should only go up to 34 amp. This, we're gonna put 50 through it. We're already way above the crimp, the connector block very soon, and the way you go, and we will be above the splice line. So we'll see how things go on. In a minute, I'll have to turn the fan on because stuff's gonna start getting a bit smoky in here. Okay, so we've been sat at 50 for about four minutes. I can already smell in the air that it's getting warm. So let's have a look at the cable itself first. That is now sitting at 75 degrees. The splice line around about 80. The way you go itself, 90. Connector block, still 47 that came up at. And then the crimp at 99. So I think the next time I turn it up, we'll go to 70 next time. We're going to start seeing some smoke, some flames, some drooping, and uh, I'm definitely going to have to turn the fan on. So audio after this will be a bit ropey. I might do a voiceover, but we'll leave all the cameras rolling. And still, even at 70 amp, that itself is smells warm, it is warm, we've got a bit of smoke now. And the only uh, logical thing to do now is what any person in this situation would be, is to smack it up to 100. So unfortunately, because some idiot, even though it's in a later video when I put metal fire clips in, decided to put plastic ones in and everything started to droop. So I'm just gonna turn it back on at 101. And uh, yeah, we'll watch the carnage carry on. So what you guys can see now is 100 amps being pumped through it. So this is what will be happening inside your walls and your ceilings. All the PVC is being melted off. The splice line's doing all right. The way goes dripping. Connector block seems to be okay for now. The crimp's nearly gone.
we have it. The Wago went first. Let's just get the thermal imaging camera out quickly. 200 degrees. Away you go. Well, my thermal imaging camera only goes up to 195. 195. Connector block. 195, yeah. So it's maxed out my uh, reading. But you can clearly see there from the spark that way you go went first. Right, it's been about 10 minutes. Most of the smoke's gone now. A lot of it did go outside, a little bit sat in the ceiling, so I've just left the fan on running. and just got rid of everything. So, looking at it, I was surprised, to be honest, that the way you go went first. You'll see from the footage, it was a spark as it uh, popped out. But they were quite firmly in. The Mac back of it's all melted out. Is it disconnected? Pop these off. You can see the PVC was dripping and melting. The end line is still connected, the plastic is melted off, but that's still connection through. The connector block <laughs> has melted itself off, but that is still connected. But then as I've just done that, the through crimp has pulled out. So that is a good indication of what would happen if your protective device was too high or it was faulty of if something was pulling. I know this is quite unrealistic pulling a hundred amp on let's say a ring main, but you know, people messing with their electrics, somehow something could be fed the wrong way. They could easily feed a fuse board with a 2.5 and not know. And then, do you know what I mean? It's stuff like that. When I changed a fuse board for the elderly couple all last year, they had a 2.5 mil rubber cable from as their tails that was then fed into their fuse board and their entire house was then fed off that. With the rating really of a PVC one of 34 amp, I don't know what the rating is for an old uh, VIR cable, uh, vulcanized Indian rubber, that this, could have easily happened if they'd had high load on it, if they've had more modern technology. It's different with older houses because they only have normally one socket and old couples, they don't really have a lot of technology. But you will find when going and doing AICRs, the older, especially terrace houses with one single socket in each bedroom, is that a lot of extension leads are plugged in and plugged in and plugged in. High load drawn off it, it will then melt the extension lead or the cable or the plug top. And if most of the time they would have an old one back fuse board stuff isn't going to be tripping. It only takes one person to put the wrong fuse wire in a rewirable fuse and stuff like this will happen to that. So I hope you found that interesting. Uh, I was quite shocked to find that the Wago actually went first. It, uh, it all, they all withstood way more than they should have. Let me just put that out there very clear that they exceeded my expectations and the amperage that they're rated to vastly. Um, but it does just show the difference in what you can see on a board and what could happen versus what would happen in someone's walls, lofts, floorboards or stuff like that. This is obviously worst case scenario. This is if someone severely puts in the wrong protective device, super overloads the circuit, but it does show that the cable lasted longer than it should have to what it says on the, uh, the chart. Same as the, uh, the different connectors as well, but I think they all did fantastic and it was quite interesting to see as well. Um, so yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. There's more to come. Uh, my next one should be the fire clips versus plastic clips and see why the regulation changed and how it's affected us and all equally how it's useful because some regs that are changed aren't quite very useful but some you can clear cut see that it makes perfect sense so thanks for watching please subscribe and i'll see you soon